Welcome to our channel. Today we're diving into the main phrases to shut down a narcissist. Now I'm not talking about shutting down someone who's just having a bad day, but rather those individuals who consistently exhibit a pattern of manipulative, self-centered, and often hurtful behavior. You'll learn how to handle situations when they blame you, lie to you, criticize you, seek attention, or escalate into a rage. The goal here isn't to engage in a battle, but to protect your own well-being and set healthy boundaries. Remember, dealing with a narcissist can be incredibly challenging, and these phrases are tools to help you navigate those difficult interactions. It's important to prioritize your own mental and emotional health above all else. Narcissists are masters of blame shifting. They have a remarkable ability to twist situations, making you, the other person, responsible for their actions, their feelings, and even their own shortcomings. It's a defense mechanism that protects their fragile ego. They simply cannot bear the thought of being flawed or at fault. So how do you shut down this blame game? The key is to remain calm and assertive. When you hear that familiar ring of accusation in their voice, when you feel the weight of their judgment being unfairly placed upon you, take a deep breath and remember these words. I understand your perspective, but I don't agree. This phrase is powerful for several reasons. First, it acknowledges their feelings without accepting blame. You're validating that they feel a certain way, but you're not taking ownership of their emotions. This is crucial because narcissists often use guilt and manipulation to get their way. Second, this phrase sets a clear boundary. It tells them that you won't be drawn into their distorted reality. You're not engaging in a debate about who's right or wrong, you're simply stating your position. Third, and perhaps most importantly, this phrase allows you to disengage. Narcissists thrive on conflict and attention. By refusing to play their game, you're taking away their power. You're choosing to focus on your own well-being rather than getting caught in their web of manipulation. Now it's important to remember that narcissists are incredibly skilled at pushing buttons. They may try to argue, guilt trip, or even escalate the situation, but you must stand firm in your truth. Repeat the phrase if necessary, like a mantra. I understand your perspective, but I don't agree. Over time, they'll learn that their tactics won't work on you. They'll realize that you're not an easy target for their blame and projections. And while this may not change their behavior entirely, it will empower you to protect yourself from their toxic patterns. Remember, it's not about changing them, but about safeguarding your own mental health. Engage in activities that reinforce your sense of self-worth and peace. Seek support from friends, family, or a therapist who understands your situation. Having a support system can make a significant difference in maintaining your emotional balance. Ultimately, the goal is to reclaim your power and live a life free from their manipulative tactics. You deserve to live with confidence, peace, and self-assurance. By shutting down blame, you're taking a crucial step towards a healthier, happier you. One of the most frustrating aspects of dealing with a narcissist is their loose relationship with the truth. They have a tendency to bend reality to suit their own needs and desires, often at the expense of those around them. They often distort reality to fit their narrative, conveniently forgetting details, omitting key facts, and sometimes even fabricating entire stories. Twisting events, and even outright lying, becomes second nature to them. This behavior can be incredibly damaging and confusing for those on the receiving end. This can be incredibly disorienting, leaving you to question your own sanity and perception of events. It's a tactic designed to keep you off balance and under their control. But here's the thing, you don't have to get caught in their web of deception. There are ways to protect yourself and maintain your own sense of reality. When you're faced with their blatant lies or distortions, a simple yet powerful phrase can make all the difference. That's not how I remember it. This phrase can be a game changer in these situations. This statement is brilliant in its simplicity. It allows you to assert your own memory without directly accusing them of lying, which can often escalate the situation. It doesn't accuse them of lying outright, which could trigger a defensive reaction. Instead, it gently challenges their version of events by presenting your own recollection in a non-confrontational manner. You see, narcissists often bank on the fact that people won't confront them, that they'll simply accept their distorted reality to avoid conflict. They rely on your silence and compliance. By calmly stating your own memory of the situation, you're subtly undermining their control. You're showing them that you won't be easily manipulated, by calmly stating your own memory of the situation, you're subtly undermining their control. You're showing them that you won't be easily manipulated. Now, be prepared for them to double down on their lies. They might become more insistent, more convincing in their delivery, and even more aggressive in their attempts to sway you. They might become more insistent, more convincing in their delivery. They might even try to gaslight you, 
making you question your own perception and memories. They might even try to gaslight you, making you question your own perception. This is a common tactic used to make you doubt yourself and your reality, but stand firm in your truth. Don't let their manipulations shake your confidence in your own experiences. If you have evidence to support your recollection, even better. Emails, text messages, or even accounts from witnesses can be invaluable in these situations. Emails, text messages, or even accounts from witnesses can be invaluable in these situations. These pieces of evidence can help you feel more secure in your stance, but even without concrete proof, your own experience is valid. Trust in your own perception and memory. The key is to remain calm and composed. Don't let their tactics provoke you into an emotional reaction. Don't get drawn into an argument or try to convince them of your version of events. This will only give them more power over you. Simply state your truth and move on. This shows that you are confident in your own reality and not easily swayed by their distortions. Remember, you're not responsible for managing their emotions or convincing them of anything. Your primary responsibility is to yourself and your own mental well-being. Over time, your consistent refusal to accept their distortions will plant seeds of doubt. They may start to realize that their manipulations are no longer effective. They may not admit it openly, but deep down, they'll start to question their own ability to manipulate and control you. This is a significant step towards reclaiming your own power and autonomy. Next is seeing it differently, deflecting their criticism. Narcissists are masters of criticism. They have an uncanny ability to zero in on your insecurities, magnifying your flaws and diminishing your accomplishments. Their words can be like daggers, piercing through your defenses and leaving you feeling small and inadequate. But here's the secret. You don't have to internalize their toxic judgments. When you're on the receiving end of their criticism, remember this empowering phrase, I see it differently. These four simple words can be your shield against their negativity. They create a barrier, deflecting their barbs before they can penetrate your sense of self-worth. You see, narcissists crave a reaction. They feed off of your pain, your insecurity, your self-doubt. By refusing to engage in their game of criticism, you're taking away their power. Now, it's important to understand that I see it differently is not about denying the possibility of improvement. Constructive criticism, when delivered with empathy and a genuine desire to help, can be valuable. However, narcissistic criticism is rarely about helping you grow. It's about putting you down to make themselves feel superior. So how do you differentiate between the two? Pay attention to their tone, their body language, and their overall intention. Constructive criticism is usually specific, focusing on a particular behavior or situation, while narcissistic criticism is often global, attacking your character or worth as a person. When you hear those familiar tones of judgment, those backhanded compliments, or those outright insults disguised as helpful advice, take a deep breath and remind yourself, I see it differently. This phrase allows you to acknowledge their opinion without accepting it as truth. It creates a space for you to hold on to your own perspective, your own values, and your own sense of self. Next is to focus on the task at hand, redirecting their need for attention. The world revolves around a narcissist, or at least that's how they see it. Their need for attention, for admiration, for constant validation can be exhausting for those around them. They thrive on being the center of attention, often derailing conversations, interrupting others, and steering every topic back to themselves. So how do you navigate this constant need for the spotlight? The key is to gently but firmly redirect their focus. When you find yourself caught in their whirlwind of self-absorption, when the conversation veers off track yet again, remember this simple phrase. Let's focus on the task at hand. This statement serves as a gentle reminder that there's a time and a place for everything. It subtly shifts the attention away from them and back to the matter at hand, whether it's a work project, a group discussion, or even a simple conversation. Now be prepared for resistance. Narcissists don't relinquish the spotlight easily. They may try to steer the conversation back to themselves, interrupt you, or even become sulky or withdrawn when they don't get their way. But stand firm in your resolve. The key is to remain neutral and matter-of-fact in your delivery. Avoid getting drawn into an argument or engaging in power struggles. Simply repeat the phrase as needed, like a broken record. Let's focus on the task at hand. Over time, they'll start to realize that their usual tactics aren't working. They may not admit it openly, but they'll gradually learn that their need for attention needs to be tempered in certain situations. Next is the, I'm going to step away until we can both be calm trick. Navigating narcissistic rage. Narcissistic rage is a force to be reckoned with. It's a volatile cocktail of anger, humiliation, and a desperate need for control. This rage can manifest suddenly and without warning, leaving those around the narcissist feeling blindsided and vulnerable. When their ego is threatened, 
when their carefully constructed facade begins to crumble, they can lash out in explosive and often terrifying ways. This reaction is often disproportionate to the perceived slight, making it even more bewildering and frightening for those on the receiving end. Navigating narcissistic rage requires a delicate balance of self-preservation and strategic disengagement. You can't reason with someone in the throes of such intense emotion, so your priority is to remove yourself from the situation. This is not about conceding defeat, but about protecting your own mental and emotional health. When you sense that familiar surge of anger, that venomous tone, that glint of rage in their eyes, it's time to activate your exit strategy. Calmly and assertively say these words, I'm going to step away until we can both be calm. This phrase is your lifeline, a way to diffuse the situation before it spirals out of control. This statement is brilliant in its simplicity. It doesn't engage with their anger, nor does it assign blame or judgment. It simply communicates your intention to disengage from the situation before it escalates further. This approach helps to de-escalate the tension and provides a clear boundary. Now it's crucial to deliver this statement with a sense of calm confidence. Avoid getting drawn into an argument or trying to reason with them. Remember, narcissistic rage is often rooted in a deep sense of shame and insecurity, so any perceived challenge to their ego will only fuel the fire. Your calm demeanor can act as a counterbalance to their volatility. Once you've stated your intention to step away, follow through. Leave the room, the house, or the situation entirely. Go for a walk, listen to calming music, or engage in any activity that helps you to center yourself and regain your composure. This physical distance can provide the emotional space needed to process the situation. It's important to understand that narcissistic rage is not your fault. You are not responsible for their emotions, nor are you obligated to endure their abuse. Your priority is to protect your own well-being, both physical and emotional. Recognizing this can empower you to take the necessary steps to safeguard your mental health. Over time, your consistent refusal to engage with their rage will send a powerful message. They'll learn that their tactics won't work on you, that you won't tolerate their abuse, and that they need to find healthier ways to manage their emotions. This can lead to a more balanced dynamic, where respect and boundaries are upheld. What have you done to handle situations like these? Comment below with your thoughts on this topic and what actions you'll take first. Remember, dealing with a narcissist can be incredibly challenging, but you don't have to navigate it alone. These phrases are just a starting point. The key is to use them consistently, to set firm boundaries, and to prioritize your own well-being above all else. It's a journey, and there will be ups and downs along the way. Don't forget to subscribe as we continue our series on narcissism. We'll be exploring more strategies for setting boundaries, protecting yourself from emotional abuse, and ultimately breaking free from the narcissist's grip.